Hey, what's up, everybody? How you doing? It's your man, Phil Williams, from the Phil Williams Show. Welcome. How you guys? Man, sorry about the 6 o'clock. I had to kind of jump in here early, man. There's just so much going on on this Friday. Great Friday. First of all, prayers going out to everybody in the Texas area that's in the path of the storm. Continue to do what it takes to be safe. And you'll definitely be in our prayers. It's my man, Minister Stanley Howard from Men on Point. Hello again. First of all, I'd like to say, what's up, Ryan? What's up, Billy? Amy? Don? How you guys doing today? How you doing, Shanette? God bless you, man. I'm telling you, God bless you, Miss Baker. Eddie? Madison? What's going on, Madison? Lisa? Man, yes, it is Phil time. Thank you, Amy. Amy, matter of fact, I'm going to have to talk to you, Amy, because I got an idea and it's sparked by you. Thank you. What's up, Pam? How you doing, Pam? Melanie, Brianna, God bless you guys, everybody for chiming in. What's up, what's that, Christian? How you doing, Christian? Christine, God bless you, Christine. Tracy, how you doing, Tracy Rollins? Man, thank you guys for joining in today. Gary Blackman, hey, pastor's appreciation tomorrow. Gary, come out to the church, it's at 4 o'clock. Come on out, I'm the, I'm the one bringing the word that day. For our pastor's appreciation ceremony, I'm the one bringing the word. Come on out, Gary. Love to have you there. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Come on out. We're in Covington, Georgia. If you like it, PM me, and I'll give you some more information. Pam. God bless you, Pam. Hey, guys. Great day. Hey, Chip. What's going on, Chip? Nice to have you here. Come on in. God bless you, man. Anyway, got something real important on my heart to share. Man, let me take this off here. It's a key. It's not the key to my heart. It's just the key. But um, along with Mr. Stanley Howard, we're going to talk about our men's conference. But before I go there, I want to I want to share something. I want to share something with you. It's really, really dear to my heart. And oh, one more. I got to say what's up to Dave. Yes, you know how to count. <laughs> I got you. You got the point. Guess what? Anyway, Janice. Janice Barlow. That is my man. Janice and Lita Whitener is two of the best writers, and Bill Blood also. Bill Blood is an awesome writer. But Janice, man, that last article you did, oh, my God, off the chain. You guys need to follow Janice's articles, man. She is off the chain. And what's up, Laura? What's up, George? Hey, let me get back to this thing. I love you guys. Mwah. You know I love you with everything I got. And Thomas, how you doing, Thomas? Becky, cool. cool. I can do this all day because I, I would love to acknowledge every single person that watches and tunes in and shares and all those kind of things because I love you guys dearly. But anyway, I have a saying. You know, I mentor at-risk teens um, primarily in the liberal communities. And they call me the lib flipper because I have the ability to flip liberals and get them to understand conservatism and not just understand it, but even prescribe to it and vote for it and things of this nature. It's, it's a blessing. I think it's a huge blessing. But as a music producer and a songwriter... I deal with a lot of people that come in the studio. I deal with a lot of things as a minister, as a youth pastor, as a, a preacher in my church, as somebody who loves the mess out of Jesus. I love him. I say the same. I say, do we have to be the same to get a child not to smoke cigarettes? Do we have to be the same to get a child to not smoke cigarettes? Now, I don't care if you're the avid, avid smoker. I don't care if you have a, a Pall Mall in this nose, a Camel in this nose, a Newport over here, a Winston over here, and you have cigars coming out of your ears. It's something about a smoker that doesn't want a child to smoke. A cigarette has 4,000 chemicals in every puff. And regardless if you're smoking cigarettes or not, it's just something about it that you don't want a child to smoke. We know the dangers of lung cancer and throat cancer and second hand, third hand, multiple slap hands, slap hands. We know all the hands of smoke. We know the dangers of smoking. And we don't want a child to smoke. Do we have to be the same to encourage that child? Let's take child smoking. What about, do we have to be the same in order to save a life? Person's drowning in the ocean. 
Do we need to be the same in order to save that life? What about to save America? Do we have to be the same in order to save America? I'm going to use the number 50. And I do this all the time, so please just follow with me. It's one of those demonstrations. The number 50. How many ways is it to get to 50? We can take the normal route. One, two, three, four, five, all the way to 50. We can go five times 10. Explain that. Well, if you go all the way to 50, you know how you count as 50, and then you got to a number called 10, and then you got to another number called 20, and then you got to another 30, and then 40, 50. If you did that, that's 10. There's five sets of 10. Five times 10 equals 50. Now, I explain that, and there's some people out there that goes like this. Now, there's 7 billion people on the planet now that I've just possibly shared this with. And so now they go, wow, maybe a million of them go, Wow, I can identify with that. I like that. Man, that was, man, I caught that. Man, that really resonates with me. I want to hang with that way to get to 50. Somebody might come in and say, 10 times 5. Okay, explain that. Okay, and then they go through and explain it. And then there's another million people that might say, wow, I really, really can identify with that. Some people would might have been real smart and said, five times ten, ten times five, what's the difference? The point is, is how that person received it is what the difference was. And so they said, I want to hang with that thing. That's dear to my heart. I can relate to that. There's somebody that can say two times 25. Explain that. Well, you remember when we counted one, two, three, four, five, you got the number 25? That's that there. And if you did that again, there'll be another 25. So there's two times 25. And then somebody goes, whoa, I got that, man. I'm feeling that. Oh, wow. And then they want to hang with that notion. Do you guys see what I'm saying? The goal was 50. There's so many different ways to get to 50, and that means there's so many different people that can relate to different ways. But as long as the goal was 50, do we all have to be the same? The answer is no. There's a thing that resonates with you, and you should enjoy it, appreciate it, and if you have an opportunity, share it. But what you have to resist the temptation of doing is fighting another human being that possibly has the same goal as you. They just don't relate to how to get to that goal like you do. Us as Christians, we, we can have this thing real bad. Trust me, I'm a Jesus freak. The thing that I relate to how to get to God and my salvation is through Jesus Christ in the Bible that I read. But guess what? That relates to me. Who I am is between me and Christ Jesus. I am not about to fight you. It is inappropriate for me to fight you. Cuss you, curse you, dog you, block you, demean you, just because I can relate to getting there through Jesus. Do we all have to be able to relate to Jesus Christ and that's the way that we're going to get to our salvation? To tell a child not to smoke cigarettes? To keep somebody from drowning in a lake? To save America? As long as that is our goals, we should find a way to go after this thing. Let's replace 50 with freedom. The reason why America is the most awesome place in the world under hum human conditions. How many different ways can we get to freedom? But what's the most important dynamic of 50? What's the most? And this is something that we all overlook. The most important dynamic to get to 50. What is the one major thing that needs to be understood? Do you know how to count? See, what happens in our Christianity, in our faith, in freedom, our conservatism, and all these kind of things, here's the one thing that happens. 
we assume that the person knows how to count. We're assuming. We're assuming that somebody even knows what freedom is. While we're getting prepared to punch them and stab them and shoot them and cut them and block them and all these kind of things. You're assuming they know what freedom is. You're assuming they know. They're, right now you do a poll. People don't know the difference between a Republican and a conservative. People don't know the difference between a Democrat and a liberal. But if you talk to them, they swear up and down. You can tell they don't know by their conversation. You need to educate them. You got to make sure that they even understand how to count. So wait, 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 Phil. Wait, wait. Yes, sir. Just I, let me just stop you for a minute. You mean to tell me you're supposed to understand something that you don't know? Is that what you're saying? Yes. You're not supposed I mean, to assume anything. You mean to tell me if I couldn't count? I wouldn't know how to get to 50. Is that what you say? Man, if you don't know how to count, man, everything I'm saying is wait, foreign. Wait, wait. I'm, 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 everything I'm I, saying is foreign to you. Okay, I can count a little bit. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. But you said 25 twice, two yes. times? Yes. And that's going to be 50. That's going to be 50. Okay. okay. Guess what? You Go know ahead. what? There is somebody that might introduce some new numbers to this whole dynamic. They might come to you and say, 100 divided by 2. And you're going to say, whoa. 100? I thought we was on 50. And they're going to say, well, see, you know the concept of 10, 20, 30? After 50, there's some other numbers called 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Wow, that sounds out of this world. You see what I'm saying? The point that I'm making is this. My Christian brothers and sisters, the love of Christ that we're supposed to have is not to be a zealot, not to figure out a way to demean somebody, not to figure out a way to beat them up and tell them that they're wrong. We are supposed to stick to the conviction that we have and have love for those people that think different than we do. You, you keep confusing me, Phil. Wait, wait, wait. You keep confusing me. Yes, sir. You said we're supposed to love people that we don't agree with? Is that what you're saying? That's the love of the Lord that I learned. That's how I learned to is count that, to 50. Is that, is that how we supposed to do it? I think that's what we're supposed to do. Okay. Matter of fact, I don't even think. I know. Okay. okay. Without a shadow I, of I a just, doubt. I just want to be clear because, you know, I hear people talk about conservatives, Republicans, yes, Democrats. Sir. Yes, sir. They doing it wrong. They, yes, they, they don't need to do it that way. Yes, and, sir. But... I agree with you. You have to know in order to, you know, to apply what you know. That it, so this is this. You know, Mr. No, it's okay. Check it's okay. This is the key to how I flip a liberal. I don't assume that they know about freedom because if they knew about freedom, they would not be a liberal. If they knew about true freedom according to how America is structured, they would not be a liberal. So the only reason why they're a liberal is because they don't know about freedom. So first I have to educate them on freedom. Once they get educated on freedom, then they'll make the decision. Wait a minute, I always thought I was a liberal. No, you're not. The black community, 99.9% .9 of the black community is conservative. They just don't have nobody that's willing to stand with them, love them, hug them, take the power of the Lord... And them. educate them on freedom, true them. freedom, not the free bees, just because there's the word free in there. Don't be free and dumb, be free dumb. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? And you got to have love in order to be able to do that. Yes. Yes, if you know the Lord like you do, by all means, I agree with you. But when you start going down the road of demeaning someone else and their belief or whatnot, then I think that's showing a little chink in the armor or some possible zealousness hmm. that doesn't come across like the love of the Lord that we would love hmm. for the person that we're talking to. Yes, David, I see that. One million, I got you, times 25, I got you. Man, the point is, is you got my point. Yes. 
We don't all have to be the same to tell a child not to kill themselves smoking right, cigarettes. Okay. And we all do not have to be the same to save this country. But we do have to ask each other, do you know how to count? I can't assume that you know how to count. In order to save this country, once you tell me you're a liberal, I know that you don't know how to count when it comes to adding up to freedom. Now, saying all of this, do you guys understand where I'm coming from? I think they do. My Christian brothers and sisters, we need to calm down a little bit. <laughs> we, need <to> calm. <laughs> we need to calm down just a little bit. Because we're beating up other Americans. Yes, we are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Barbara agrees. That's not love. That's not love. And if it's some kind of form of tough love, <sighs> no. You go to heaven by yourself, you go to hell by yourself. There was a man that got to heaven, and he got there a chance to go to heaven, and he said, and God wouldn't let him in, and what did he say? But I cast out demons in your name, and this and that, and God told him, you worker of iniquity, I do not know you, part from me. That person just knew that they was doing right in the name of the Lord. They just knew it. But there was no love there. That's the key word. There was no love. There was no love. Hold to our Christian convictions. Do not let no one talk us off of our proverbial ledge that they want to make it seem like we're on. The alleged ledge. But you got to love the hell out of people that don't agree with you. Amen. Amen. Because, Amen. man, we got children smoking to while we're, our heads are smoking towards each other. I'm telling you guys, a lot of these, none of them know about freedom like we do. We got to teach them how to count and not assume just because they can speak and they went to school and, and whatever they have and they're whatever. No, if you're a liberal, you don't know how to count to freedom, true freedom, American freedom. Hey, that's just my opinion. But why are we here? Because the men's conference. This men's conference right here. Iron Man's conference. Iron Sharp and Iron. It goes right into what I'm sharing. Minister Stanley and the men on point, disciples for Christ, are bringing people with a bunch of different perspectives. But they know how to count to manhood. Yes, sir. They know how to count. Yes, sir. And we all and they're, look different. And they're all different. Different walks of life. And they're not trying to be the same in order to show a man that they count. That's right. That they matter. That's right. And they're coming together September 23rd at the Cobb County Civic Center. 548 Marietta Parkway. Marietta, Georgia 30060. They're coming together and they are going to minister and help provide some resources, a shoulder to cry on, a hand to shake, a, a, sh a body to hug, and it's showing them that they count, that they matter, that there's freedom. And this man right here is the brainchild of this him and his group, and, and, Mental and Point. So funny. It is so funny that you say that, Phil, the love thing. Sir. It's funny you brought that up because I was just on the phone with, with a friend of mine that goes to another church. And I needed some inspiration. I needed some uplifting for the conference because, you know, things kind of fall apart and you're trying to get things together. And I just needed some, some, just some, some help to be. And he said, man, he said, I love you. That's, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the problems that we have in society. Without a man knowing Christ for himself, how could he say that I love you, Phil? How could you? You have to have a relationship, and a relationship is more than just going to church. You have to spend time in the Word, fasting and praying, to get to know Him. When you when you met your wife, when you met your wife, you had to develop a relationship with her to get to know her, to love her. Right? It's the same way with Christ. You have to develop a relationship. And with my friend and I having this relationship, we've, we're free to tell each other 
We love one another. Even as we men, it, there's nothing funny about us. Yeah. But this is what the conference is all about, helping men to get out of that that norm, that, that box that everybody put us in. A man should not cry. <laughs> <laughs> A man should do this. If, if he thumps his toe, he should not cry. He just should hold his breath. That's utterly ridiculous. This is why so many men and women are suffering. They don't have anyone to talk to. They don't have anyone that understands that they hurt too. We hurt too. We may not express it the same way. Of course, men don't. A lot of men don't talk. But we're trying to help you. We're going to help you when you come to this conference. It's all about being a better man. Not saying that you're not a man, but being a better man for your wife, for your family. We're trying to keep you with your, your kids. We don't want you because you, and I say that every week, because a lot of times you and that woman fall out. Let's don't fall out with your kids, with your children. Let's don't fall out because it's so important that we as men come together and, and spend some time talking. Sure. This, this conference, the speakers, they're going to speak for a very short period of time. Then they're going to take questions. It's going to be a dialogue, not a monologue, because we as men, we don't want men to just continue to talk and run their mouth all the time because we get bored. Of course, man, we, we, we got about five minutes <laughs> <laughs> to pay attention. And Phil and I, we're not going to be here long because I know many of you probably falling asleep now because we both are preachers. <laughs> and preachers talk. Well, well. <laughs> But this this thing for me is it's about it's a life changing for me to to get to know my father, my savior. And men, if you come out, you that are struggling with your your belief in Christ, we're gonna help you. And if you're not <laughs> struggling, come and help us. We need to let oh, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I got you, Dave. Why, why, why are you yawning, Dave? But that's okay. I do. If anybody understands, Dave, I do. It's yes, been a sir. long day, yes, sir. and don't want to hear two preachers run their mouth. And we're gonna make sure that we don't do five closures between each preacher. That's ten times we don't close. <laughs> we will take up an offering before we leave, right? But I will say this. You know what Minister Stanley was just saying. You know Jesus even used this. I believe. It relates to that counting to 50. They yes. came to Jesus and said, are you the Christ? And he says, who do they say I am? That's He's right. basically saying, how do they count? Right. How, how do they add it up? You right. tell me. Right. And then based on that answer, he would know how they counted. Was it a liberal? I, man, he knew. Jesus knew if somebody was liberal or conservative <laughs> by how they counted. Who do they say I am? Well, some say you're the son of man. Okay, that seems like they're adding it up pretty good. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Some say. Right. So the point is, is this. You got to lean. You got to understand that people have a different understanding than you. But they still want to get a child not to smoke. They still want to get a person not to drown. They still want to get a person out of a burning building. Right. They just have a different understanding with you. And so while you're there fighting for your ability to be wiser or more biblical, biblically knowledgeable, and while you're in there demeaning go, someone, go scripture. Go you know, while you're doing all those things, it's nothing wrong with that. Study to show thyself approved. approved. It didn't say memorize scriptures to show yourself approved. approved. Study to, what does study mean? Spending time. Spending time. Because read John 15. That's where that part, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. That's where Jesus said, if I abide in you and you abide in me and things this thing, there are certain things you will not do if Jesus is in there. There are certain things you will not do. That's what that whole thing is about. You'll know when Jesus is in there is when you're treating people like Jesus would. Is that love? That's love. That's love. Some of the most disturbing things, the people that I love, I'm watching them beat up another person with scripture, with Bible, with even historical facts. What I'm seeing there, even if I agree with what you're saying, I don't agree with how you're displaying it. 
You can be 100% factual in everything you're saying. So you're saying but presentation. There, but there's children out there we need to get quit from smoking. There's Americans we got to get out there that stop giving up their freedoms. Stop fighting each other. In one of my songs I say, before you preach a spiritual life, make sure that their hearts is right. So when the Lord sheds the light on the problem, they'll turn to the Lord to help solve them and not the world. What people are missing is fundamental right from wrong. That's what's missing. They are not prepared to understand Christ is or Christ isn't. They're not prepared to understand Christ crucified. They don't even appreciate fundamental right from wrong. Not to make this about Donald Trump, but this is a good example. Does Donald Trump even know how to count before you can count on him to add things up for you? Donald Trump, does he know fundamental right from wrong? And if he does, does he know how to implement it? Before you say, I'm looking to Donald Trump for my moral compass. I'm looking for the president no matter who he or she may be. I'm looking to that human being to be the bastion of morality for me. And if you're a Christian thinking that way, there's something wrong with your counting. Because you're not trying to get to Jesus. You're not understanding Jesus. You're not understanding what God sent. You're not understanding that. If you're a Christian looking for any man to be your example of morality. What we talked about earlier, Phil, we talked about pastors. I love pastors. I listen to them, but I'm listening to for the word of God. I'm not. What we have to understand, you don't go home and tell your spouse what pastor said. You tell them what the word of God says. Too often, people are running around saying, have not read scripture for themselves. Listening to what, oh, my pastor said this, my pastor said that. Your pastor doesn't have a heaven or hell to put you in. So you can't go worrying about what this man says. You have to study, find out for yourself. Understand for yourself. Read for yourself. Add. 50 for yourself. If you don't know how, come to the conference. We'll teach you. We'll show you how to get it. If we don't have the answers, we'll find someone that do have the answers for you. And for all those people out there saying, Mr. Stanley said something bad about my pastor. Oh, my pastor. No, I'm sure your pastor encourages you to read the word for yourself. For yourself. I'm sure your pastor doesn't want you to sit up there and think he and put him on a pedestal no. so God can come in here and knock him down. A bit. I'm sure of it. I'm sure of it. Now, if your pastor inspires you and he feeds you, that's great. By all means, love him, honor your pastor. But trust me, your pastor is encouraging you to read the word, learn to Have count it. for yourself. Self. Trust me, I'm sure he is. Have your Bible open when the pastor's reading, when the pastor's preaching. Have your Bible open to agree. When you say amen, you know the word is there because you're looking at what he's talking about. And if you have any questions, trust me, <laughs> do not stand up in the middle of Sunday service. Pastor, you, the Bible said, oh, my Lord. Oh, you're going to send me to hell, Pastor. I'm That's going to hell. No, 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 no. Bible stop. study. Bible <laughs> Decent study order. Decent is for order. that time. Ask questions. Respectfully. At Bible study. Respectfully. Ask questions because trust me, God. ask God right then and there because he wants you to know. <laughs> he wants you to know. But more so, hey, on behalf of Minister Stanley, <laughs> in, closing, in closing, the men's conference, if you like to contribute but you can't get to the men's conference, you go to themenonpoint.org .org, <laughs> and on the home page, you'll see the Iron Man's conference and at the bottom it says for information and registration. Click that tab and then there on that page off to your left, you'll see four different ways you can register. If you like to just purchase a ticket so that the Men on Point can go out and get some men in the community 
and round them up because you contributed and helped them be able to come. Exactly. That's exactly what we're going to do. And like I said, if you'd like to attend the pastor's appreciation, my pastor's appreciation, Jimmy A. Copeland, a mustard seed faith, where he has given me the honor to deliver the message at his pastor's appreciation, just private message me and I'll get you the information. And if you'd like to even contribute to that cause, by all means, I'll give you that information too. But on behalf of Minister Stanley Howard. Thank you so much, guys. On behalf of you guys. But more so on the behalf of the Jesus Christ that I love yeah, we serve. and serve. Know if they know how to count. Yes. Before you just assume that they, that they do. do. Hey, freedom requires the same thing. Know if they even know about freedom before you start beating them down because they're giving away their own freedom. Who was it that said? I could have saved a thousand more if they would have known that, that they, they were, were slaves. Harriet Tubman. That's who it was. A conservative. <laughs> <laughs> a conservative. <laughs> hey, but on behalf of Men on Point, Disciples of Christ, please come to the Iron Man's Conference September 23rd at 4. I'm sorry. The time is... We start at 10. They start at 10. Goes to 4. Registration starts from 8 to 10. Yes. We'd love for you to be there. Enjoy yourself. It's going to be a great time, yes. guys. And, hey, i got to give a special shout-out to my man, Nick Johnson. I'm telling you, this young man, 22-year-old young man, Nick Johnson, you're growing, my man. You're growing. And I love what you're doing. Hey, I like to even believe that I had a very, very small part in that. But, Nick Johnson, keep up the good work. God is truly showing you some things, man. Keep sharing it. Trust me. And remember, we do not have to be the same. To count to 50. Or to get a child not to smoke cigarettes. Hey, love you guys. Share this video. God bless.